Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of Crazy Sovol SV08 Upgrades. But before we get to that, I have to make a little selfish request. YouTube brought to my attention that 93.8% of my viewers have not subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy the videos and don't mind to do the thing, you know, click the thing, would be great. Thank you. So, but today we're gonna look into Sobol SV08 nozzle. Anyone who researched that printer in the internet came across a lot of posts on Reddit and other forums and things on YouTube where they were talking about that the Sobol SV08 nozzles come undone when you print PETG, I believe it was. Sobol addressed that issue apparently and it was, as they said, only a certain batch of the nozzles. But it made me thinking, if it came undone, that means it is just a press fit. It could be potentially disassembled. Potentially. If it gets disassembled, could you replace the broken nozzle with an off-the-shelf nozzle from another printer? Who knows? Okay. My nozzle did not come undone. I made it undone. Put it in a vise. Stay off these nice pliers, just twisted it, and out it came. This part is actually not the nozzle, right? This is just the heating block. This is the nozzle. And as you can see here in the back, mine was this one was completely fucked. You can see that in the other video. It's all clogged up, so it didn't matter if I broke it. You can see here made out of copper and a piece of it sheared off inside the heating block. Uh, doesn't really matter. Heating block is made out of brass and I just took a drill and drilled inside to get the piece of copper that was still stuck from the nozzle to get that out. Just ream it out a little bit on the bottom and then you're good. So what you end up with is this heat block, which has a machine hole in it. This machine hole is exactly five millimeters in diameter. And anyone who knows something about tapping with one of these knows that five millimeters is exactly the diameter you need for M6 thread. And guess what? The majority of aftermarket printer nozzles for Elgoo printers, Ender 3 printers, God knows what else printers, they're yeah, all M6 threads. So if your nozzle is fuckered for whatever reason, it could be that with the modification we're gonna do today, we can save money in the long run. Because these are way cheaper than the assembly. So I'm gonna sell you. For a set of 10 stainless steel nozzles from the Elgo Neptune 4 and Neptune 4 Pro. Chinese made by Hiku Di. Yi. I neither speak Mandarin nor Cantonese, so sorry for that. But for 10 of those, I paid $14 for well, Canadian Snow Peso on Amazon. I believe a set of the 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 nozzle. Four nozzles, I think, is somewhere in the price range of 30 Canadian dollars. Yeah! So well, let's see if that's gonna work. I also bought this fancy tool. And you know it's fancy because. Uh, it was delivered in your local drug dealer's um, favorite packaging. When your tools come in this, you know it's great quality. So I put that in my vise in the garage. It was freezing cold out there, that's why I didn't take a video. Battery powered tools and electronics don't really like it when it drops below negative 20 degrees Celsius. So I took this, 
and that after removing those. And oops, put a thread in it. That worked great. Then I took my LD nozzle, and uh, I can show you why I chose this one. This is the original one from the Sovol SV Ray, and this is the Neptune 4 nozzle. Yep, they are the same length. However, this is not the proper tool for cutting a blind hole. A blind hole is a hole that doesn't go all the way through, that is blocked on the bottom, because I can obviously not thread all the way through, because we need this, right? You can't get all the way in because it doesn't cut here. The top here doesn't cut the right thread. This one down here, you don't get far enough in. So, what we ended up with at this point in time is the following. It fits, but it sticks out the far. And um, that's not acceptable. What does that mean? I have to order another tool, which I couldn't find. And since this is such a high quality precision piece of equipment, we're gonna go and chop that off. In order to do that, we have to go to the garage. Okay, here we are again. Let's see if we can cut this down and then thread that heat block all the way down to the bottom so that our nozzle fits. And if you're wondering why I'm not cutting down the nozzle, why I'm cutting down my tool, I will explain that later when I'm back inside where it's warm. Okay, that doesn't look too terrible. Let's see. I would call that a success. Oh, by the way, just a piece of advice. If you want to pause that video right now and um, whip out all your tools and follow along, don't do that. I have no fucking idea if it's actually going to work, okay? Like, don't take this as a how to do it yourself video until we find out together if it actually works. In order to do that, you have to go back inside. And we're back! Did you use the time that took me from the garage to here in order to hit the subscribe button? I bet you did. Why did I cut off my M6 tab and not the back of the nozzle? I could have gotten Ender 3 nozzles. They are shorter, but they are a little bit too short. And what I don't want to do, cut off every future nozzle when I exchange them. So I rather trim down the tool and then just exchange the nozzles. However, I'm also pretty convinced that this will work. Because if you look on Amazon and you find um, Sovol SV08 hardened steel nozzles, they sell you two of these with a different tip in the original block. It looks a bit crooked though. Time to put it on the printer. And I will report back with the results. Okay, the modified nozzle is installed. This is what it looks like. Now is the question, can we get the filament loaded? And can we get the set offset calibrated properly? Oh, by the way, you guys can see these. I've seen them in a different video. Um, and I tracked these corner braces down. You can actually find them on printables. I'm gonna, I forgot who made them, but I'm gonna put the link in the description below. Thank you for whoever designed these. They are quite nice. Um, they definitely help stiffen this up quite a bit. Temperature rises, but uh, the heat block was not different, right? I just hope there's not too much of a gap between the nozzle and the existing heat block that, that all the goopy plastic gets wedged in there and then it gets all clogged up. That is my fear but fingers crossed pulling definitely pulling 
Now is the question, where does the stuff come out? On the side or on the bottom? Hmm. Extrude finish, eh? Oh, there's something oozing out. Let's try this again. Load filament. Yeah, there's definitely something coming out on the bottom. Why does it always cool off so quickly? Jesus Christ. Come on. Well, I would say... So far, so good. Can you stop pooping now? Fuck, it's hot. Let's get the thing heat soaked. I do not have a heat soak macro on here. But you're gonna see what I do here. I do auto home, then I move my nozzle to 5mm above the print bed. And then I hit prepare PLA print. And then when that is sitting for, or after that was sitting for 15 minutes, I gonna start the set offset. Just so the bed has a chance because it's like, it was sitting for weeks now. And it's like all cold and fast print I. We let that sit for a while and then we're gonna come back and see if we can calibrate the set offset on that new nozzle. Just one piece of information. This printer, my computer is currently not on. So I'm running everything off the printer. There's no other software wizardry going on or something. This is straight out of the box. So old software running right now. Uh, there's also no calibration currently for the for the filament because I had a little hiccup with my system the other day and I had to reinstall the OS and everything and I didn't get to the part yet where I could run the calibration in the slicer for managing the filament and all the um, extrusion speeds and all that kind of stuff. It's all bone stock Sovo SV08 without a fan and a crooked hot end and a modified nozzle. What could go wrong? And then I run one set offset where I start tuning by just looking at the dots that thing prints. And then I peel them off and I try to find the best one, usually the one that completely sticks together and doesn't come off in strings. And then I usually run a second set offset starting with that setting and then maybe lifting it a little bit or going a little bit lower. So I always do two runs, not only one. Let's see if we can get that done and hope we don't crash the nozzle into the freaking print bed. It does get awfully close with the nozzle to the print bed as it is right now. Oof. So far, no crash. Even the nozzle cleaning, it uh, didn't go all too deep into that little rubber pad in the back there. It's not bad, not bad so far. My stupid print bed was out of alignment. So um, if you do this, align that first. Better. I'm pretty sure this is filament issue. Uh, I get relatively clean lines, or at this point actually no lines, indistinguishable, but then in between like little blobs, that is probably moisture. Yeah, see those were the two spots right there, where it had where it had these little blobs, but where it doesn't have the blobs, Jesus, it's pretty, Pretty solid, I would say. Um, before I adjusted it, before I lowered the nozzle, oh, crappy. Yeah, that was the first one. Yeah, second one. Okay, I'm gonna run one more set offset, do the tuning. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with that. And then we're gonna print a test benchy and see where it's at. Okay, I finished the second round of set offset. I wanna explain why I always do two. You do your auto home, you change something on your printer, 
on the first run the printer does not exactly know where there is zero. So it does the first run of set offset and then it does a quick reboot. That's when it zeroes itself back in. When you then go into set offset calibration the second time, it starts with set at plus minus 0 0.00. And from that point on, you can actually do your tune. You go into tune and in my case, I went down another 0 0.02 millimeters. And then I printed an entire set with negative 0 0.02 millimeters of these dots. This is how that then looks like. Remember how it was all stringy before? You have to really... This is one layer. You have to really give it. And it doesn't matter which one I choose. They are all the same. This is the center one. That's a nice layer. However, since I threaded that heat block, you saw me blowing into it and trying to get rid of all the crap that's collecting in there from the drilling and threading. Didn't work out 100%. There is, or there were, maybe there still are, tiny little bits and pieces of brass still in there. Two or three of them actually came out during the set offset calibration. I feared so much. That's the reason, or one of the reasons, why I also didn't use drilling oil, cutting loop, or any form of other lubrication when I tapped that brass. Theoretically, you're supposed to use something, but I didn't want to have grease stuck in there, which I can't get out anymore, and then it is forever mixed in to my prints and prevents layer adhesion. That would suck ass. Besides, if you machine brass, if I remember correctly from way back when in the day, um, even when you do it on a CNC machine and such, brass is somewhat self-lubricating. So much so that if you cut it too fast, it almost gets, I don't want to say slimy, but, but it gets too slippery. So yeah, that was another reason why I did not use lubricant. And now I'm just going to wait how the Benji is doing. And I will report back with that. Yeah. Don't think that this is the desired outcome. After a very promising start with the set offset calibration, I was hopeful. But, um. <sighs> Well, fuck. I guess I have to do some further investigation where that came from. If my nozzle is blocked, maybe something got jammed in there, or just everything is not aligned properly, or maybe this just doesn't work. I guess we will do that in another video. And as I said before, don't bring out your tools and do what I did. See you next time.